lunch time I had the opportunity to share some experience, but now is a time when we can speak to each other and share good practices and policies. Uh, I'm very keen to learn, for example, uh, how the Serbian colleagues are doing and what they accomplish uh, already. This is something I've been told to my, by my colleague, uh, Lechazar, they, that they are doing a very good job. So my name is Girgana Rakowska, I'm a Bologna expert, and I've been working to, in a career counseling uh, field uh, since 2003. And I have uh, my colleagues with me today. We're going to do this uh, panel discussion together. Uh, Andrea is uh, sitting next to me. She is the Vice President of European Board of Certified Counselors. Also, Harold, and I'll ask all of them to present, each, uh, to present themselves because uh, they know more than I do. So, could you just say a few words before we start? Can you hear me now? Better. No. Can you hear me now? No. no. You can speak without the microphone. I, can, I think I can speak without the microphone, but... Uh, yes. Oh, it looks so. Does it, does it test, work? Test. Yes, I see. No. Nothing's happening. Can you hear me now? Hello? Okay. Okay. Maybe you can start and then Andrea Nobody will... can hear us. Oh, nothing? Okay. No. No. Hello. Never mind. We, we can okay, the microphone is coming. The microphone is coming. Nice. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, because I can hear myself now. So, uh, I think I Just presented present myself. Yourself. Yes, I come from Romania. Uh, I'm one of the first counselor educators in Romania, and I have the first PhD in counseling mm -hmm. in Romania, which makes my status a little bit shady. Uh, and right now, I live in Portugal, and I run, as Gergana mentioned, the European Board for Certified Counselors, an almost unknown NGO that I hope we will get, uh, we'll get to learn more about. Uh, in the next minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Haris Huskic. I'm coming from Employment Service from Bosnia and Herzegovina. From federal part, uh, I'm actually head of the uh, labor market department, and my uh, responsibility is uh, labor market police. Uh, normally, I will try it, uh, by this uh, conference to uh, express some uh, set challenges and also some issues we have to uh, focus in, in, our, in my country. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Marisa Javor. I'm a, a head of vocational educational guidance uh, division, regional office, uh, uh, Croatian Employment Service, uh, Dalmatia, Croatia, <laughs> of course. And uh, I'm working like a uh, vocational education guidance about uh, 20 years. Hello, my name is Harald Reichmann. I'm part of the Styrian Association for Education and Economics in Austria. Uh, our organization does a lot of projects on the point, on the transition point between school and the world of work. And there we have a lot of experience uh, regarding uh, counseling young people and so on and dealing with teachers in this area and this experience we want to share with you this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. So what we, we discussed briefly the um, format of this, of this panel today and our idea is just to give you a very brief uh, information what we're doing and then to start a discussion so all of us uh, will have uh, opportunity to share uh, thoughts and examples. Thank you all for presenting yourselves. Uh, could you start the... 
I was um, I prepared a very short presentation that will just go out be, uh, go on the screen it's not a presentation it is a visualization I could say on what we have what we seen till now because uh, during the morning our keynote speakers if I can call them such way, talk about career education, about the linkages between career counselors, teachers, employers. And I was thinking when I prepared uh, myself for this discussion that we have a very, very tough job as uh, career educators and counselors because we have a vast number of new professions that don't still don't exist from one side, and from the other side, we have this new generation that is um, uh, ready with so many, that has so many new skills from one side, and from the other side, don't know where in this vast information uh, territory to look for uh, you know, interesting and re reliable um, data and information and career con um, consultancy. So uh, I think that all of us are facing so many new challenges uh, and we all need additional skills as teachers and educators. And this is something that in our opinion is uh, lacking in Bulgaria. Um, we all want to, introduce career counseling in schools and at the universities, but at the same time, we have no, our teachers and our educators don't have the right skills to connect these young people with the right consultancy. So this is a big problem and we need to, to think how to imply probably the education, the legislation that will help us to have a better prepare teachers because this is the, the easiest way for students to uh, have an access to, to the right um, um, and concrete uh, consultancy. So this was my kind of introduction and now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Andrea and I'll tell you more about Bulgaria later on. You can go. I know that you prepare something. I, I'm a little bit ADD, so I have the need to move, if you don't mind. And I also wrote something on the PowerPoint. First of all, um, I, I want to thank the organizers. It's, it's an honor for me to be here. And uh, Le Cesar, they're not 21 countries, they're 22, because Romania is, is among us. Um, so uh, what I will try to do, I'll start the other way around, because our esteemed speakers succeeded to um, I mean, um, they, they just said everything I wanted to say, so I had to rewrite everything. So I will start with the conclusions, and then uh, in seven minutes, I know this is how much I have, probably five and a half left. I, I would like to squeeze two countries, Romania and Portugal, and to present to you a very interesting contrast be between a former communist country and the country that has been a democracy for such a long time, and where they are now. But um, I will start with um, uh, by telling you that I represent, I'm a counselor educator, but for the moment I'm on leave of absence, so I will not play the professor, I will not tell you many things. Uh, but I represent a community that probably not everybody is aware of. I represent some practitioners uh, that uh, uh, have studied um, a curriculum and uh, called GCDF, I'm not going there to tell you what this stands for, I'll give you more information afterwards. They are career counselors and they exist in all those European countries. And right now we have around 2,000, uh, 1,600 are already certified and 400 are still in training. Please raise your hands, the GCDFs are in the room. The GCDFs in the rooms, and me too. I'm the first one in Europe. Uh, so uh, this started as an experiment because in 2003, I was working at the university in Bucharest and the situation there was so bad and there's nothing. Oh, of course, we had the policies. Uh, they look very nice on papers. 
uh, but uh, the public was, was n in need for something really concrete, so I created this program. I basically took an American program and I, I customized it for Romania. We piloted it three times. We survived the piloting process and then Bulgaria found out because at that time Romania and Bulgaria were competitors for EU. And Gergana said, oh, they have an American program, we have to have it too. So that's how Bulgaria, and then it, it was Macedonia, and then it was Turkey, and uh, it was basically, it was a network. Uh, we, we have this number with zero European money. We have, we reached this number of practitioners with zero support from EU because we were always told, oh, you started as an American. Uh, initiative, which is, yeah, it is true because, yes, we have to open our eyes to what happens outside as, as Helen presented uh, good practices from outside. So, uh, and these are some uh, countries outside of you that have this certification. Currently, we're talking about 15,000 GCDFs around the world and 20,000 uh, still, uh, uh, including the students. Uh, what are the, and this is a certification program, not a diploma program, which means that I'll give you uh, some, some worst practices, examples from Italy. I, I, I started one day to uh, count how many programs they have, certification programs in career counseling, and I stopped at 33. Some of them are as long as three hours. Uh, and they give you a nice certificate that is, you can keep for the rest of your life. There is no good evaluation, there is no continuing education requirement, there is no supervision, there is nothing. There is no protection of the public or quality assurance. So, um, so uh, in terms of credentialing, this is the suggestion coming from and for Romania and Portugal. We, Europe needs to move from the diploma system to the certification system. Diploma is the old style, like my parents' generation, remember what I mentioned to you, one diploma good for the rest of your life. Certification means more protection of the public because you have to renew, you have to stay current and updated. And means quality education. Um, and now uh, I, I just want to share with you some uh, feedback from our GCDFs in Romania. For our, from our career consultants in Romania. And all of you know the Maslow pyramids of needs, right? Let's talk about the elephant in the room because nobody addressed, I think Professor Watts ad addressed the issue of the crisis, but it was like, hmm. No, we have this big elephant in the room, very nice, the, the policies and very nice. What about right now? And that's where, the, where, that's where I think this is another point when, where you need the feedback from the practitioners. What happens with the public? Nobody knows what happens. We know what happens at the ministry, ministry level, but we don't know what happens to the public. And this is the feedback that came from, from my former students from, in that? Romania. We have 400 he, he GCDS right now. Gonna... They said, this is what I trained them, uh, you know? Uh, Self-actualization, you remember that, career, right? And now they're, they're clients and they say, the clients come to them and this is what they want. They want a job. They want to survive the crisis. And they say, this is just for elites. And the elites are maybe 5%, 3%. So what we teach them at the university level doesn't really fit what happens in the labor market. So uh, this is just one piece of information for you, for the policy makers in the room, to keep in mind that besides the minister and the other bodies, uh, maybe yeah, you want to take a look at the, what happens in the business area, in the private areas. Um, and before talking about immediate needs, what happens in, uh, in uh, Romania, I think we're pretty much pretty advanced if we take into consideration the criteria that you mentioned. We have career guidance at the curriculum level, so it's, it's, uh, and it's compulsory, and we moved, uh, we're in the movement from the employment mentality to the employability mentality, as you, as you mentioned, and um, uh, one of the good practices that I, I, I can mention from there is this program that is now active at the master's level and undergraduate level and in the private, in the private level. 
uh, in the private sector. And uh, we also have a program that is uh, actually covered all the university centers, is in distance counseling, and it was a joint program between Romania and Germany in 2004. So all the university counseling centers, they are basically vocational guidance centers. They're trained to do vocational guidance through telephone. Uh, and about uh, Portugal, uh, Portugal is still in search for good practices and for good policies. Portugal is one of the very few countries in EU that doesn't actually implement uh, the policies that they create based on uh, with, with funding from EU. Uh, they do have career centers in some universities and uh, in some schools, but people are not trained there. So, and this, this is how I will finish. These are the immediate needs coming from, from, at least from those two countries. Training of the practitioners, it sounds, very, it sounds great that you want to do that, but the practitioners, that's why they're frustrated. That's why they, they feel that this is a burden. Besides the underpayment, they're not trained. So they, they, they are not comfortable to work to the um, Clients and uh, with an emphasis, emphasis on the ICT because the policy makers in, in the countries I represent, some of them don't know how to use the email. Uh, let's not mention Skyping or, or, or web work or, and practitioners don't know how to do it. Some teachers don't know how to do it. And I would recommend, we would recommend a bottom up approach when you create policies and just keep this in mind. Thank you very much. I know I went over the time. Thank, Thank you, you, Andrea. And let's uh, give the floor to our colleague Harris now to hear the Bosnian Herzegovina. Uh, okay, I will try in, in short only to to let you know about some uh, activities. They are uh, actually they are connected to the uh, career guidance in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we are uh, dealing with the career guidance in schools. I will only sh uh, pass short through the uh, presentation. Presentation is in on the maps. Uh, we have this activity, we are doing it, but the problem is we, we, we did not succeed to include all the schools uh, we should, they should be included to these activities. Uh, the, the main reason is that we don't have enough staff doing that. Uh, there, there is, a, we don't have a professional advisors, we don't have enough psycho psychologists. Uh, they are actually very sufficient on the, our list, but they are not, unfortunately, they are employed. And the second is that uh, youth employment and retention, uh, employability and retention program, uh, so can, uh, called YERP. This is a program from U UN uh, financed by MDG Achievement Fund, implemented by Uni United Nations in our country. Uh, this is a very good uh, program. Actually, this is uh, about uh, establishment about uh, 10 uh, Cantonal Center for informing, advising, uh, and training for the youth people. Uh, till now, we have uh, nine, and uh, we have already very good results uh, dealing with the young people. They are coming, but the, what is the disadvantage, disadvantage of uh, this uh, is a problem that uh, there are only nine uh, Cantonal services included to this uh, uh, project. The other municipalities and other parts of federation, unfortunately, uh, it's not, they are not included. And sometimes it's very difficult to ensure all the uh, interesting young people to, to come to and all the expenses they normally they, we should ensure for that. Uh, we have also active measures uh, which we provided uh, also in this year. Uh, there are normally informative motivation uh, seminars, uh, then seminars uh, for seeking for a job. Uh, there are some active tools, probably what uh, is, uh, has been done in other uh, institutions, uh, specialized training, writing, CV, how to behave by interview, or, or and uh, we have something new that is uh, entrepreneurship training uh, for young entrepreneurs. Uh, also, we have some good uh, uh, examples of good practice. Uh, we have one job club. This is also specialized for the young people. We get it uh, under of one uh, program. It's, it's called Youth Employment Program and implemented by GOPA in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Also, we succeeded to develop our website ABC of the Career. 
uh, what is uh, not maybe good, it's not interactive, uh, it's only a web, but in, in some uh, future times we are planning to, to make it more uh, in interactive, to, to, get, uh, uh, to offer more possibility to the people who are interested to visit this website. There are some uh, normally professional uh, uh, brochures, uh, done some prospects, and so right. Uh, what is really important now, I would like to say, I uh, actually, I will present it as a SWOT anal analysis uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, sector in my country. Uh, the, there are some strengths. Uh, we have a tradition and rich ex experience. We had it actually until the beginning of 19 uh, years. Then we know, every, everybody knows what is happening. Then after that we had a, a war. And we didn't succeed to to put the system again on as we already as we had it already. Uh, then strengthened awareness for necessary changes and willingness about uh, uh, need how to improve this field. Uh, we have so many weaknesses. I would not say and I would not emphasize them, but I will say only uh, not existing le legal uh, legal frame. It's very important. We don't have it. Uh, and we have very decentralized system of uh, not only of public employment services. It is a uh, very uh, de decentralized uh, system of education in our country. We have 14 levels of education. So it's, it's very difficult to, to get or to make any kind of consensus about some, very, uh, uh, about some questions. They are very, uh, very important for the, ne for, for the coming reform. I will also, I will also say there, are, there is a still no standard of providing services that is very important. Uh, one problem is that, uh, as I already said, we didn't succeed to, to put all interesting uh, to the uh, about schools and others uh, unemployed people to get the whole information they will they uh, we don't have enough staff as already said and uh, and there is a there is a very poor uh, exchange uh, between the the main social partners in our country i think that is a very problem uh, what are the our opportunities opportunities are this, uh, the current reform processes in education sector but leading by the European Union in our country, but it, it, it has not been always the best solution. For example, we have now the fourth part of EU VET reform. Uh, this is too much. I mean, and I already uh, heard there, there will be a fifth of uh, continuing of this uh, process. Uh, we have examples of good practice in, in our neighbor countries and, uh, and broader. Uh, the main treats about uh, our uh, career guidance related to the uh, public employment services are labor market. It's always difficult to get uh, uh, really uh, uh, one ob objective pictures of the labor market about some needs, about some uh, what 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 really the labor market needs uh, for. And uh, you know that there is always there are some very quickly uh, changing trends on the labor market. Then we don't uh, have, we have inadequate infrastructure. Then uh, what is really important by, uh, in our country is lack of political willness is uh, about many questions. And, and we don't have enough uh, money. This is always a problem what could be <laughs> addressed to the... Okay, for now I will finish now and I hope I will get maybe some answers. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I want to apologize for my bad English. It's third language I learned. I just started to learn last year. <laughs> Long last learning. <laughs> um, I uh, shall tell you something about uh, lifelong career guidance in uh, Croatia. But uh, I try to... Um, answer of those questions Mr. Africano said to us the last 10 minutes <laughs> uh, about um, uh, uh, career skills should be taught at an earlier age in uh, schools. Uh, my own opinion, of course. <laughs> Why? Uh, because uh, in Croatia today we are uh, working uh, in a counselor, uh, like uh, I'm working, like a vocational educational counselor with people on final gra uh, grade primary school, eight years, about uh, 14, 15 years old. 
and it is too late uh, to develop career skills. Uh, that is the time to, to make uh, first decisions. Uh, but in my experience, uh, uh, the people, young people, uh, know they serve, they, uh, themselves very well, but they didn't know a lot of things about labor market, and they are not really realistic. So, uh, because of that, uh, I will tell you one uh, regional project uh, with uh, no money, <laughs> just uh, because we want to try to experience, uh, experiment with uh, younger uh, uh, pupils, and we started to research a professional educational in group, group students in se uh, seventh year primary school with uh, uh, one uh, very motivated and uh, very creative uh, teacher of Croatian language in a basic school near the Croatian Employment Service Regional Office split. Uh, we, uh, it, uh, 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 three groups of students uh, was uh, uh, in those uh, classroom. One of them uh, studied the educational system, region, regional educational system. One of groups studied the, edu uh, the profession, occupational, in regional system, and one gro group the study vocational gu guidance and all information about the labor market. So they uh, mixed together teamwork and uh, mixed uh, one uh, final presentation to us, older one, adults. <laughs> and after that, they uh, are starting to teach the other pupils. That's the best part I ever seen in my whole careers. Uh, they... Uh, know uh, so many technical things, computers things, and uh, Facebook, Twitter, Skype, uh, anything like that. They use everything in uh, those uh, education. Uh, and that is, uh, I don't know, uh, something we should uh, learn from them. <laughs> I think so. That is a good example for our uh, little region region, but uh, what uh, uh, happened in the creation in the policy is uh, uh, the teachers are um, not uh, well paid, that's the problem. Uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, laws, they have to, uh, a lot of things to do with those uh, pupils and they have no time for uh, and no motivated anymore for uh, growing up uh, development uh, de de themselves. That's the problem. If uh, we find uh, some uh, individuals, teachers, in basic school life, they are uh, very interesting in those career guidance, but they need uh, uh, education and they need support for uh, we are a very well connection with the colleagues in uh, basic uh, schools and the colleagues in secondary schools and uh, university too. Uh, so the, our job after they are started, uh, the procedure of uh, career counseling is the uh, more effective and uh, uh, our job uh, like a psychologist is uh, like uh, we do uh, in Croatia so-called tired services, the largest number of users, pupils and adults uh, is uh, informed by, uh, through the groups of uh, individual information, provisions, self-informing, my choices uh, and the others. The smaller numbers of users uh, would be included in group counseling and that is the point of the schools, I think so. Group counseling is the better when it's coming uh, in the schools. And the smallest number of users through the complete procedure of a psychological medical treatment, uh, which is the most uh, demanding and expensive approach, of course. 
and, and we are trying to do that. Uh, the, the continuous provision of information and counseling activities for young first job seekers and final grade secondary school students is in Croatia. We are uh, doing uh, one, um, I will tell you one story uh, about the group counseling pupils, uh, uh, call it uh, Do It, okay? Uh, in a secondary school, we are coming in those, those school uh, to prepare uh, pupils for job seeking and the learning job seeking skills. Uh, uh, we are coming from Creation Employment Service and that uh, that is a good project but um, finished. <laughs> no money for that. <laughs> uh, it's um, expensive, uh, too long uh, time to provide. And uh, uh, about uh, uh, education of those, uh, I think uh, we have a minimum uh, different level of counselors, uh, three maybe, I, maybe more, <laughs> I think about three. One is the uh, first level, simple informing and exploring uh, something, and I think we have that in Croatia, in all country and the all uh, schools. But the second level is teaching career skills we haven't. Uh, some places, on some places on the, we have, uh, but not uh, in all places and uh, all country. And the third level is uh, career counseling and most uh, professionals, and that is... Uh, uh, so I, I think it's uh, very necessary for creation and for others. Uh, the second level, uh, in uh, teaching career skills uh, to <clears throat> development in uh, schools uh, and uh, even in kindergarten, I don't know, it's a good thing, but uh, um, that's all I think I can say from creation. I don't want to s tell you what we have now, just for information we have um, um, the component, five components of the project uh, uh, services to clients, career employment services, uh, improving lifelong career guidance and uh, ICT support. Uh, one component, just for information, is uh, networking all stakeholders, cooperation between partners, and two uh, components in development and integrated the new software application in Creation Employment Service. Uh, three components establish national lifelong guidance forum. That is, uh, we have to do. And uh, component five, uh, component four, establish seven career information and guidance center in the region, Croatia. And uh, five components is presents those centers to to clients, to stakeholders, and wider public or nas on national and regional level and uh, I think that will be good for us uh, more uh, 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 very much activities in Croatia is now for uh, all those things in all levels thank you thank you first I want to thank for the invitation to this conference and to bring the possibility to talk about Austria and the Austrian system. Um, career guidance has a top priority in our new lifelong learning strategy. Uh, we formulated in a, in a separate um, strategic guideline in our lifelong learning strategy and called it the lifelong guidance strategy. And um, in this we we declared uh, a few programmatic targets we want to reach and one of it is to implement, and to implement the career man management skills in all curricula. And this means also that we don't start with career guidance in school time, but we, we even think about, and this, that's the actual discourse in, in Austria, we think about uh, beginning career guidance very early in kindergarten with different methods and tools to to bring the, the children very early in contact with with the world of work with economy uh, to have a perspective how life 
can be. And uh, let me tell you uh, uh, another thing. Uh, when we when we talk about career management skills, uh, the the term career is is very difficult uh, because we we can't say it's it's only for our career the things we we teach our children in in career gardens and so on. It's it's more. Uh, things they they need for life. It's it's more uh, a, a part of life planning than only of planning a career. But as we heard this morning, uh, if we understand career as um, a, a bigger thing, uh, we we match in 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 this discussion. Um, in Austria, we have. Uh, the, the schools are very important in in kind of career guidance, and in schools we have uh, a free tier tiers model, um, which also was um, mentioned by the OECD as a as a good uh, model, and it contains uh, first of all the career education in schools, then the um, school counselors. And the third tier are the school psychologists for those who need different um, support for other things, not only career guidance. But we have to face that it is not possible that the teachers or the school can offer anything on their own. Um, they need partners, external actors experts for different aspects the, the teachers can't bring to the to the students and in all of that the, the role of the schools is that the teachers has to to support and guide the students to create their own way of decision making and finding their own way to the world of work um, for school it is another function that they bring the information to the students which possibilities for support are there in the in the region they live or are in in the whole country and the third thing which is important in 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 this um, uh, in this point of view is that all activities the schools do have to be focused on competences competences the children need for the further life and um, as I mentioned before, the school can't do anything on their own. They need partners, and um, these partners are totally different. Uh, we have uh, the, the public employment services as a main partner in, in career guidance in Austria, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and other activities and organizations like the Student Association of Education and uh, Economics which offers different projects on the way from the school to the world of work. And one of these projects I, I would um, tell you a little bit about is the so-called Career Catching Counselors. Um, this is a typical Sturian project. And in this project, we have in each region of Sturia, one person who supports the schools and the youngsters in finding their way what they should do after compulsory school. This can be uh, uh, another school, uh, further education, or this can be uh, an apprenticeship. And the um, task of the career catching counselors is that they find out together with the teachers, together with the students and also with the parents which possibilities does the uh, the young person has and and which um, further education will match to the possibilities and the interests of of the young person yeah um, we also should talk about challenges in in this way and one big challenge we we all have to deal with is this, there are so many good projects in Austria and also uh, in, in other countries, but we can't be sure that these projects uh, maintain for a long time 
maybe with the next period of financing ends also the possibility is there that also this really good project will end and um, our wish is that good projects for career guidance should be evaluated and not even stay a project but become a program uh, so that the schools can be sure that this offer uh, exists for a longer period and also the students which need these special activities for getting their best way in in the world of work or further education. Thank you. Thank you. So the, I, I would like to open the floor now for comments, uh, questions, because I think we all heard that there are many good examples, good projects in each of our countries, but uh, there is lack of legislation or um, lack of um, public policies that will uh, make these uh, good ideas um, uh, like a policy for the countries and will in institutionalize the good practices. We all mentioned, I think, that um, teachers and counselors need uh, further education, new skills. And uh, one last point that I put here is uh, curricular reform to include career counseling, career education in the curricula or to create uh, specific special subjects, compulsory or electives. Uh, this is a discussion that is going now even in Bulgaria. So I'm very curious to hear uh, your comments and uh, questions. Raimu has a comment, I guess. Thank, um, thank for the panelists. Is it on? Yeah. Now it's on. Yes. Um, thank you for the panelists for the for your comments and the last comment on the um, role of uh, guidance within the curriculum and. Um, within the slide, Helmut mentioned that Finland had guidance as a, a compulsory subject or the time slot in the curriculum since uh, 1970. And there was one reason, a specific reason for that um, at that time. Um, it was linked to a school reform which took place in Finland in 1970. And there was also a change from the society, from agricultural society, from the industrial society. So when guidance was integrated as a compulsory element for the curriculum, it was a tool for implementing the whole school reform. So it provided information about the new system for students, other teachers and parents, and also the employers were very keen because uh, by uh, using this um, opportunity, they could provide information what are the current labor market needs and opportunities for the young people. So in a way, it had uh, met all the needs from the individual student, effectiveness in the educational labor market, and then uh, helped the government to implement the school reform in a quality manner. Other comments? Thank you. First of all, I would, uh, I'm uh, Snežna Klašna from Serbia, Ministry of Youth and Sport, believe or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, uh, for the opportunity that so big delegation from Serbia participate in this seminar. Eight of us are here. And uh, maybe the reason is uh, because uh, we are now just in the implementation of the strategy of career guidance and uh, all uh, main stakeholders, uh, except youth, maybe, are now here with us. So, uh, I would like to tell you only example, it's not the answer about the questions you mentioned, 
but some examples from Serbia. Uh, so in uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sport was established in two 2007. So, and the first task was to develop the strategy, national strategy of youth. We succeeded that within 10 months with 16,000 youth which were asked about the strategy, and we are very proud of that, of course. So the government adopted strategy in 2008. One of the measures were to have the career guidance and counseling strategy for youth. That was the reason why we are involved in this story and try to come to that issue to implement the strategy. And then we invited all other ministries, Ministry of Economic and Regional Development is responsible for some kind of the employment, Ministry of Education and Science. Now they have the, another name, so they are Education and Science. At that time it was only the education. So the public employment service, of course, and NGO sectors. Why? NGO sectors, they uh, first of all uh, developed their own strategy of career guidance and counseling in 2007 together with all these stakeholders, we, uh, but without uh, the Ministry of Youth, it does not exist at that time. And we tried to put uh, the whole strategy, but not only for youth, for all citizens. And of course, we succeeded that, uh, and it was uh, in previous year. After that, uh, the government established um, some kind of the body, we named that uh, working group for the implementation of the, the strategy. And this uh, working group consists of 10 members. All of them are representative of different ministries, which I mentioned, and also NGO sectors, universities also, and the uh, chamber, uh, conf uh, chamber of commerce, <laughs> I don't know, business sector may I tell. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, now I would like to share only some little examples, maybe uh, the colleagues of mine will tell you, uh, from Serbia. First of all, I would like to, uh, sh to invite uh, Jelena Manic from Belgrade Open School and the organization, because we do not uh, hear today anything maybe from that sector, to tell about uh, something uh, about the digital opportunities uh, in career guidance in Serbia, some examples which they are working on, and also Biljana from this business sector, to tell about uh, some contract uh, about the social entrepreneurship and the uh, memorandum with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Economic and Regional Development, a little bit, one or two minutes, and if some of my colleagues want to add, and we are, of course, uh, open for all your questions. First of all, I think Jan is somewhere. Is she here? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, we, we were invited by Lachizar, so sorry for taking too much time maybe talking about Serbia. Um, I heard this morning Helmut mentioned that uh, digital um, and web-based career counseling is maybe not used as much as it could. I agree with you. Uh, we try to do some uh, improvements in that field. So uh, we as an NGO, um, we are involved in career guidance for many, many years, not so many as tradition in uh, other European uh, countries. Uh, um, European Union countries, but we're trying to keep in, keep it up. So uh, basically, we developed um, an online career guidance system with uh, online s tests for self-assessment, uh, occupational database, um, database of all um, higher education institutions, and um, uh, some uh, other tools for decision making and CV builder. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think that's that's like the most important thing. Why wh what we developed? I think it's more important why because in Serbia, so many, so uh, few young people do have uh, access 